The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Well, praise the Lord and good to have you back with us again tonight. Welcome to I'm Alive. My name is Philip Trent. I pastor Emmanuel Ministry Church over in Hart County, Kentucky. We're located about seven miles east of Horse Cave on Highway 218 in a community called Lee Grand. Uh, we're right around the curve, actually past Lee Grand Elementary School there on the left. Our Sunday school starts at 930 on Sunday mornings goes to about 10, uh, 9, 30, 25 or so. And then we try to be up in the sanctuary around 10, uh, around 10, 30, 10, 35, and start our announcements and all. And we have our, our, our uh, worship service, our worship team. We're a charismatic type uh, contemporary style music. We do have guitar and drums and various things to aid in our uh, our worship uh, up to the Lord. I mean, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, we just, uh, we thank the Lord likes it, so that's why we do it. And uh, we just enjoy worship and praise. Every praise is to our God. And every word of worship, to, it belongs to Him. Amen. So that's that's our goal with that is to worship God and praise God. And of course, we preach and teach and practice the Word of God. Uh, we lay hands on the sick. Uh, anybody that's got problems, we pray for them. We believe in prayer. We believe in praise. We believe in worship. We believe in the Holy Communion. There's just a whole host of things we do on a consistent basis. And uh, we just love for you to come be with us anytime you possibly can. And we're glad to be here tonight. Glad to have our son with us again tonight. He's been with us basically all this year. I think missed one service maybe. I preached one time before you got here. Uh, but uh, we, we're about to get into the farming sector and he does some farming. <laughs> we don't know how that's going to work, but we'll just walk by faith and not by sight and see Amen. what happens. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get into our service for tonight. Dear God in heaven, we're so Thank grateful you, for Jesus. this opportunity to be here uh, before these people and to be here in fellowship with our son and be here in fellowship Thank with you. And Lord, we just ask you to tabernacle with us now and to pull something out of these scriptures that lie before us that we might be able to present something to these people that would be of value to help them in the raising of their children, to help them in their life's journey, to help them through the situations and troubles and trials and tribulations that they face personally and health issues and all kind of issues. Your Bible, your word is a book that's full of answers. And when the Holy Ghost helps us unravel Travel these truths, it brings and makes answers so simple and so clear. So we would have that tonight, Father, that you would use us to bring about a simplicity, the simplicity of the gospel through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we ask you to help us do that tonight, Lord, as we undertake the subject matters at hand. May you be glorified and may people be blessed and may your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We usually start our scriptures off in our study off in Romans chapter 1. Paul said, I'm ready to preach the gospel. Phil and I, we try to stay on ready for we're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and salvation. There one believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek for in it is in the gospel of Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God revealed. It's made available. It's, uh, it's seen. So we, we, we we want to, first off, I want to say, we are, we're Jesus people. Yes. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in the holy commandments of God. But we believe the only way to keep the holy commandments of God is to get born again and to live after the Spirit, to walk mm -hmm. after the Spirit. All the commandments and laws and things that was put out there never did fix everything. Mm -hmm. It just never did fix it. Really, it pointed right. to man's dilemma that mm -hmm. man could not live a life that was right before God because of a sin nature. He had a nature to sin. I mean, you could hold him at bay and you could do all this stuff, but sooner or later that old nature would rise up in him and yes. he'd do the wrong thing. Paul said, that, I'm telling you, when I would do good, evil is present with me. What in the world am I going to do? And then he said, I thank the uh, Lord. I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So amen. Jesus is the answer. We want you to know that. We're yes. going to go to Deuteronomy and talk here, but we want you to know that we believe Jesus is the answer for this situation. And Jesus has come, and Jesus is available for us today. But I want you to know the law is good. 
Paul said the law is good. Right. So what are we going to do with this law? Should we just throw it away? No, 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 no. We don't throw it away. But here's what I believe we do with it in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. Talking about the Old Testament. All, if you look here, there was murmuring and complaining. There was all kinds of things going on. They were building idols and doing all kinds of bad stuff. But it says, now these, these things happen to them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world has come. So I believe we're in the end times. So we can go back and look at what happened in, with their lives and we can glean something. We can gain something. It seems to be today that wholesale across the, across the board field that it don't make no difference what you do. People just seem to have this greasy, gracie mindset that, well, you know, it don't make no difference. God's a loving God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who's, who's God going to send to hell? I mean, he's done already let Jesus take this sin stuff right. for us. So why would he get anything out of sending me to hell? It don't make no difference what I do. Some of that is truth with some lie involved in it. Right. So we don't, you know, if you've got a pound of hamburger, but you already only got just a teaspoonful of poison in there, are you going to eat that hamburger? No, you're not because it's got poison in it. Well, we don't want to put out a poisonous message. We don't want any poison. So what we're going to do here this time, we've been talking about balance. Now, God's idea of balance is the best idea of balance. When God told Moses and instructed Moses here in the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 5, you'll find that's where God brought the Ten Commandments. And Moses brought those Ten Commandments before the people. And then in chapter 6, Moses now is kind of bringing a synopsis. He's trying to bring in a, a little, let's break this down to this point. And we'll look at this field here and, and help me now. I know you're a smart young man, so I, I need your help. So we find these, that these are the commandments and the statutes and the ordinances which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land to which you go in to possess it. So God wants them to possess this land. Right. I want you to I want to say this to you. God wants you blessed. I yes. can say that without mm -hmm. any hesitation. God right. wants you prosperous. He wants you healthy. He wants you well. He wants you content, to be honest with you. Yes. Amen. But he has a ways and means committee as to how this happens. Right. You can't just get it done any old way. God don't just bless any old thing. No. But this is what he will bless. He'll bless his word. If you keep it. And when his word is found lodged in your heart, and when his word is found in the limbs of your body, living out what we call righteous lifestyle, God will bless yes. it. I just guarantee you will. So here, and this is the essence of the law. Moses is saying, okay, here's what it comes down to. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to go possess the land. Listen, do you think God Almighty looks better if you all broke down if you're all just can't, you, you're, you're mully grubs, you can't do anything. God gets no pleasure out of your no. demise. God gets no glory out of your failure. No. <laughs> you know, the only way God could get glory out of your failure is for you to come through it and bring glory and honor to him. God does not. Yes. If God got pleasure out of your failure, he'd have left us in a failure. Absolutely. He'd have never brought Jesus on the scene. Well, Jesus said he came, he said, I come to bring life. Absolutely. And life more abundantly. Absolutely. Uh, you read in uh, 2 Peter, mm -hmm. his divine power has given us all things. All this things. is 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. According as his divine power hath given us all things, all things. that pertain unto life and and godly. Amen. That through the knowledge of him that hath called you to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises we might be partakers of the divine or the God nature. Amen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And that lust is the lust of the flesh. Yes. Basically it's the sinful nature. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't want us to be under the sinful nature. He wants us to be under 
the divine nature, the mm -hmm. God kind of nature. The divine nature is ruled by love. Mm -hmm. The divine nature is ruled and motivated through your faith. It's act, the, the action of the divine nature comes through faith in Christ and faith mm -hmm. in His Word. So we've got to be a people of love and a mm -hmm. people of faith, a people of action. The Bible says that you can be hearers of the Word, but not doers. He said, don't do that. He said, be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only. Mm -hmm. So we know that we have the love of God. We have faith that, that empowers us and gives us the, uh, the power, the grace, the, the uh, ability on mm -hmm. the inside to do what we couldn't do on our own. And then we have God's Word as our guide. Mm -hmm. And in the Old Covenant, we know that He gave us some things to show us um, in many cases, things not to do. Mm -hmm. And some of this stuff here, he said, don't, don't do this. I think of one of the verses, and I don't know exactly uh, in chapter 6 there that where you were wanting to start, but uh, I wanted to look at uh, chapter 6 and verse 12. Beware lest thou forget the Lord. Mm -hmm. He gives them a warning and he said, you know, mm -hmm. some things that are, I'm going to address here he, he says, don't forget the Lord. He brought you out of the land, mm -hmm. and He brought you from the land of bondage. You know, it's easy for people to forget where mm -hmm. the Lord has brought you from, and we get our eyes on other things. The Bible says, set your affection on things above, though, and not on things of the earth. So as we look at these, remember the admonition that was given to us here. He says, beware. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime you see that sign that says beware of dog or, you know, beware of electric fence or something, beware. It means be watchful. He said, beware because you can forget the Lord which brought you out. And the number one thing in balance of life that we've been discussing the last few weeks, put the Lord in the center of your life Amen. or there's no way to have a balance. So as we cover these, remember that this is followed, this is the 12th verse, and I think you're going to start back earlier than we that. We're going to go back in two. Uh, but he says that the, after we read these things, he said, beware that you forget. So the stuff we're going to read is very important mm -hmm. because God put an explanation point on it right here and said, be careful you don't forget this. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just going to pretend that I'm talking to a family of five. We've got a mom and dad of three, three children here. And uh, they've asked me to come as a coach or as a minister and say, just, I want you to help us in life. What, what should we do as a family here? Well, now we know in this world what's going to what's gonna bring to this family. We've got multiple sports that's going to be, there's, there's coaches all over the country. They want your sons and daughters playing sports. There's cheerleading, there's academics, there's bands, there's all these things that we already know is going to be pulling. When I come and sit down with this family, I know what's after them out here. So I'm going to try my best to help this family because ultimately I want them to spend eternity with God. Mm -hmm. We're on a short venture here. At maximum of 120 years, and I'm 71 into it already. But so I realize how short it is. So I want to help this family. So what am I going to tell this family? I'm going to tell this family Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'm going to tell this family that here's a place of security for your children. You must raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You need to get these things into your children because I can tell you the world ain't going to put them in there. If you don't get them into your children in your home and in your church cycle that you go through, they're not coming to them in this world no. because this world is trying its best to take everything of the Bible out of it, right. out of everything. I, they don't want Jesus mentioned. They don't want the Holy Bible. They don't want you wearing a T-shirt. They don't want you wearing a cross. They're trying to completely eliminate anything to do with God. Isn't that right? That is right. So I'm going to tell this loving family, here's where I think you need to start. You need to start with the things that secure so that your children by the Holy Spirit will feel conviction and come to Jesus who is the answer. I want your children to be born again of the Spirit of God yes. and receive Jesus who is the summation of all this. 
when it's all said and done, all these commandments that God gave Moses are fulfilled in this one thing. You shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love yes. your neighbor. Now that's Jesus coming into your heart. Mm -hmm. But let's go back here in, in Deuteronomy 6 and 2, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. If you don't put a wholesome reverence and respect in your children for God, the world ain't going to. No. Matter of fact, they're going to teach you disrespect. Mm -hmm. I'll come through an, a, a time in my life to where you respected the, the officers. You respected the teachers. You respected uncles and aunts. You respected grandparents. I mean, you had respect for the law. Mm -hmm. You had respect for the 55 that was on right. the sign. You re, you, there was just respect. Yes. And now we've come to a point to where you can hardly find respect. People have come through right into church with their cap pulled down to the ears. They won't, they, there's no, seemingly no respect. And, and it's still been, it's hard to, to make that respect come. You got to teach that. Yeah. You got to teach this to your children. And mom and daddy, you got to be diligent too. When you tell your children to do something, it's not 10 strikes. No, you got to teach them to be responsible right off the start. And if you don't teach respect for God, then you won't have no respect in your house. It's hard to get respect for parents if there's no respect for God. Because for on the other end of it, what's the use? There's no penalty program. Right. I mean, it all, okay, sirrah, sirrah. No, he said that you might fear, respect the Lord our God, and keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day. Listen, get you a copy of the Ten Commandments. Get the Ten Commandments and put them up. Let your children know that this house and this family is raised upon the teachings of the Lord God Jehovah. And the Ten Commandments is not a thing well wrong with them. Now I know Jesus fulfilled them all. Right. I'm going to present Jesus. But the Bible tells me, Phil, what does it say there in Galatians? That the law is a schoolmaster. Right. It's training wheels on your tricycle to teach them how to ride so when they get there, they can take the training wheels off. Right. The law is good. Amen. That you, the statutes command, which I teach you today, that you and your sons and your son's sons, me and you and Phil and his children too, all the days of thy life, that, they, that, that thy days may be prolonged. In other words, God wants you to live out your 120 years. Mm -hmm. He wants you to live out your full years. Right. But God it knows His Word. If you don't do these things, your life will be cut short. Right. Amen. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that thou may, that it may be well with thee. God wants it to be well with you. Why does He teach you these things? He wants it to be well right. with you. <laughs> Amen. Right. Same way over in the New Testament, He said, teach your children to honor the Lord, raise them, raise them in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, that it might be well with them. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6, yes. it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Respect. Now, that honoring... Uh, that takes on a number of different ways that you can do that. But one of the ways that I think that we see today that has went by the wayside is the way you talk about your parents. Mm. Because even if the parent isn't perfect, and they're not, I'm a parent and I'm not perfect. I'm about the only one that I ever know. You're about the only one I've ever come across. But a parent, <laughs> <laughs> that's such a joke you don't even know, okay? That Dave don't be laughing. That, that, that's, that's, everybody should just get a chuckle out yeah. of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That honoring starts with what you say. Mm -hmm. it, it, honor is an action. Mm -hmm. uh, and it starts with your words. It's the way you treat them. You should honor your parents. Absolutely. And I know that some parents have done some vile things. There have been some parents that have been bad. I had really good parents. My parents are very good. But I, I will say and this. we did too. You, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, Mom and dad had really good examples. And they, mm -hmm. I mean, you could go back for a long way. But here's the, the, the point I want to make. Start with, your, with what you say. You won't find me ever say anything negative about my mom and dad. I'm just not going to do it. Even if I see something that I, I think is negative, I would never speak it. If I'm going to say something about my dad that would be negative, it's going to be said directly to my dad. No place else that we'll mm -hmm. talk about. Dad, have you thought about this? I'm not going to ever come down and, and say, Dad, you need to know. 
No, no, no. Honor. Honor in the way you speak. Mm -hmm. Honor in the way you carry yourself. Honor in the way that you treat your parents. Why? He says, honor, which is the first commandment with promise. So he goes back to that law and he's repeating what was said in Deuteronomy. That may be so, well with you. He, you know, when we look at the, the law, there's a lot of it repeated in the New Testament. So if, if when dad said earlier, oh, we're going to talk about the law, he said, well, that's not New Testament. Well, a lot of the law that he's talking about this is almost word for word. It he does says verse, come out of the verse, Right. Yeah. They're, they're just repeating it, but it's mm -hmm. almost word for word. He says that it will be well with thee, and you may live long upon the earth. Yeah. And, and so that's a promise that comes from God, Amen. something that comes from Him, but it does have some requirements of us. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some promises of God you can receive, and they don't have a lot of requirements for you to receive them. Some have more requirements for you to receive them. Like, for instance, this particular one, it has the requirement of honor to receive the long life. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, well, I'm going to have long life because the Bible says it. Well, the Bible says here that you're going to have long life if you honor your father and your mother. Mm -hmm. So that you go back to these commandments and they pay uh, in your life. And the reason they pay is because it's God is the yeah. one that's backing them up. It's, it's the Word of God. And so we can't just be a, uh, a passive person about mm -hmm. this. Find a way to honor your, your parents. Matter of fact, we're now in March here, uh, Father's Day and Mother's Day, you know, are, are at this time of year. Do something to honor them and, and more than buying them a pair of socks, <laughs> you know. I mean, what about just, uh, just telling them how you feel about Absolutely. them or, or writing them a letter? Mm -hmm. One of the other things that D Dad mentioned this, and uh, you, you talked about, and I'll turn you back loose on what you were going there that if you went to a family of five, that one of the things that you would say, well, there's a lot of things that's going to pull against you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that pulls the most, folks, is your social media. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, the social media is really getting into our households. and Hours and, and your, hours and hours spent right, on that thing. Your, your kids are being fed continually, and not yes. always do we know what they're being fed. No. And we, you know, think very that we do, but be very, be very careful, careful about your social media because it's not only sports that pulls on the kids. Your kids are being pulled 24 hours a day by that phone that's in their hands. And one of the greatest things that Dad, during our youth camp, you that we, that, we that, that phone gets, uh, when we do our youth camp and His church goes and Faith is a Victory goes, a uh, living word in Adairville, Kentucky, and there's a church in Georgia coming with us this year. The first thing that happens as soon as we arrive at camp, all phones go in a box and they go with me. Mm -hmm. And we take all social media. Do you know that after three days that it's been numbers, not one or two kids, but I'm talking about bunches of kids have said to me, well, I almost don't want that back yeah. because they realize how much of a pull that mm -hmm. has on their life. So God here by Moses, which Moses was kind of like Christ, pre-Christ, mm -hmm. he would lead the people. God led the people through Moses, yes. a type of Christ. He says, hear, O Israel, and observe to do that it might be well with you. So I want this family to know that there's things you can do and the things you must do to, for security's sake for your lives in the future. And he goes on to say, Hear, O Israel, verse 4, The Lord thy God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. I mean, that gives you no leeway. Right. It's just one way to do it, with all, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. So it shows us the triunity of God. Man is spirit. He has a soul, lives in the physical body. Right. So we've got to work on all three of these areas. And that's it's, taught in the home. Absolutely. It this is, is taught, taught the at the house. It's taught at the house and it's taught at the house. Yes. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. The very core of your existence, these words should be right down ingrained into the core of your existence. Why? Because... You know, you know, your children are going to be away from you more time than they're going to be with you yes. eventually. So these will go with your children. These, this is a spiritual thing that will go with your children. Well, you know, at our house, we just don't do that. I mean, kids do all kinds of things and steal stuff and lie and do all kinds. But, you know, there's, a, there's, there's something that constrains me. Right. There's something that constrains you when you was in, in, in school. You didn't yes. do things that others did. Why? Because you was taught. 
Right. You see, and it needs to be taught. And listen, this is how serious that Moses says it gets down to. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Yes, diligently. And talk to them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when you get up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be in the frontlets between their eyes. How important is this, dear friends? Now, I don't know about you, Phil, but when I, when I make my notes of what I'm going to do right on the top of my hand, I write them right there. I don't do that. That's what I do. I take an ink pen and I write notes to remind me because I look at my watch once in a while and I say, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I got to get double A batteries before I get back to the house. I need double A batteries. And uh, so so I write these notes. It's a good place to put them okay. right there. I don't know if they had ink pens back then, but uh, uh, and. But he, here's what he told These are so important that you need to keep them before your children all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. You need to keep them out there. You need, it wouldn't hurt nothing to put some things on the mirror where they brush their hair. It wouldn't hurt to put things. He goes on to say, thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house. I mean, how many women would want the, the commandments of God written on the doorpost? We need them. And, thou, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which you swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and notable goodly cities which thou buildest not, and your houses are full of good things. Listen, God wants you to have good things. God wants your children to have good things. I guarantee you this. If we'll listen to God and do it his way, you'll have good things. Yep. I guarantee you, you'll have good things yeah. and houses that are good houses, which are filled. Thou fillest not and wells you didn't dig, which thou diggest not vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. And when thou shalt have eaten and are full, then here's where the problem comes. Mm -hmm. And I think we see this across wholesale now. Yep. We forgot where, where we come from. We forgot who brought us. Has this nation forgot how it become the great nation that it is? Yeah. Have we lost sight of the word of God and the, the commandments of God and the grace of God and the, the Christ of God, the spirit of the living God that brought us to this place? Oh, my goodness, America. Oh, my goodness, family. Oh, my goodness, family of five. Get these words of God into your children's hearts mm -hmm. and then make sure you teach them. It's not just by living these words. This is going to point you to a place that your child will come to a place one of these days and they'll realize, God, I can't do this. I just cannot do this. Yep. Oh, wretched man that I am, help me. And the Spirit of God will draw them to a saving grace. Yep. When you get Jesus Christ in the spirit of that child and the holy commandments and word of God in their minds, you got you a strong Christian. You got you somebody that can live this thing out to full days on their earth. I want you to know, dear friends, God loves you. I want you to know there's still hope for a family today. Yes, God absolutely. has a way and a means committee and he'll sit down at your table and go through these things. And I will too, if I can be of assistance. Thank you for watching. We'll be here next week on the same station.